compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Colossians 3.1. This verse has been the inspiration for my entire capstone experience because I believe that the most important thing is loving others well. And I fail at this all the time. And I knew that these virtues of humility and compassion were ones that I wanted to grow in when we were given the task of choosing virtues as seniors that we wanted to get better at. However, I believe that we are responsible for showing Christ's love, but you can't do that when you're focused on self. Now, that, that does not mean that you need to put yourself below others or think of yourself as less than others, because self-confidence is important, but without humility and compassion, it's just arrogance. Not only did I pursue these virtues, but I had the privilege of exploring the field of nursing, which I know some of you are excited about too. I've dreamed of being a nurse since I was a freshman, so getting this spring pro professional experience to dive deeper has been really exciting for me. To do this, I set up about four interviews with nurses, past nurses, people who have a lot of experience working with nurses. I only ended up doing one of those interviews, and that was with a certified nurse assistant. Her name is Angela, that I've known for a few years. She basically just told me the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of being a nurse. Some of the things that she said that really stood out to me were, it's deeper than surface level work, and it's more important than just taking care of patients. You get to know them and their needs, even beyond the hospital. Another thing that she said is, humility is a huge part of the job because you learn to be thankful for a thankless job. She also shared some really special stories about her experiences and with how impactful her relationships with her patients has been to the point where they're both in tears when they come, when they comes time for them to discharge. After this, I set up a shadow day with Heather Barber, that's Stephanie's mom, and she works as a mom baby nurse at a hospital downtown. And I basically just got to follow her around and see what she does on a daily basis and really just see the, selfish, the selflessness involved in this field of work. And I genuinely enjoyed this experience. The final piece of my project, I had the sixth graders from Front Range write thank you letters to nurses, which they were so sweet. They, a lot of them were personal stories that they had or stories from parents or grandparents that were just really impactful. Unfortunately, I did not have the time yet to deliver them, but I definitely plan on doing that because they're so special. So for me, not much happened in the fall portion of this experience. <laughs> that was a lot of frustration. So I will mostly be talking about what happened in the spring portion of my experience. So needless to say, all of this has been very challenging for me and definitely not smooth. Come on in, Dad. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but it taught me so many different things along the way. And one of the biggest challenges that I faced with this project was working with very little and learning that I don't do well with my own failure and that I'm very impatient when it comes to my own failure. Before any of the things that I just talked about actually happened, there was weeks and months of plans falling through, things not working out, people not responding to my messages, ideas that I had just not turning out to be anything. I became very bitter, very unmotivated because I didn't want to keep striving after something that just felt so hopeless to me all year long. After talking with my peers and with my parents and just praying about this a ton, I discovered that maybe I needed to learn that failure is okay. Mr. Butler and Mr. Spector said over and over in class, failure is good, and if you're not doing anything, I'm proud of you. Like, that's great. Keep it up. And that was so frustrating to me and made me so angry because I'm the kind of person that strives for everything that I do to be perfect, and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Sierra, after talking with her, she so lovingly reminded me of a story of when we were young. We created an obstacle course in her basement where one of the pieces you had to jump from the counter onto a plastic box. Super easy. Sierra did it. Piece of cake. I got up there to do it and I looked down at the box and I could not bring myself to jump because I was so scared that I would make a fool out of myself. So I sat on the counter and I cried <laughs> because <laughs> I was just too terrified and I didn't want to do it and I was afraid that I would fail. So this simple story has really opened my eyes to how much that character trait that I have has really carried on to now as a senior. 
So Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I've had to learn that I can't expect perfection for myself, that it's okay to fail in this world, and that I will not always be perfect. This struggle that I've had of trying to be perfect has pointed to a bigger issue of lack of trust in my life because I wasn't willing to let go of the reins of perfectionism and just let God. I've discovered that I am so weak and incapable, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it is far easier to get through stressful, terrifying times in your life when you believe in God's timing and you put his will at the center of everything that you do. And this is a very valuable lesson to learn for the field of nursing or just any area of life, but especially with nursing, I learned that there are a lot of mistakes and you have to be okay with asking for help from people. That's something that Mrs. Barber really encouraged me with. So moving forward, I have a much better grasp on faith and what it means to put your trust in God and to not try and do it alone. Not, not saying that I expect him to make everything perfect because I trust him, but saying that I'm more comfortable with failure knowing that everything happens in God's timing and that he'll never give me anything that I can't handle. So after pushing through these failures and discovering what it means to be a nurse, I've discovered that I'm actually very excited about pursuing that field, and I know some of you are in here because of that, and that's awesome. I'm so grateful that this experience has really pushed me in the right direction because juniors, seniors, we've heard it so many times in the past two years, calling. It's so terrifying to think about what you're going to do with your life, and I was always afraid that I was going to make a mistake or not do what God wanted me to do with my life. So just having this whole experience under my belt has made me so much more confident in taking that step and actually pursuing this field of work. When people ask me why I wanted to be a nurse, I never felt like I had a good enough answer for them. I always said, well, I really love people and science is my favorite subject. I really liked anatomy, so sure. I'll do nursing, but that just didn't feel good enough for me. So after pondering over it and reflecting over this whole experience, I found a verse that really sums up how I feel about nursing. Galatians 6, 2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I truly feel like God is calling me to use my love for people and science to bear one another's burdens, to do everything that I can, to be a healer in a world where God is the ultimate healer, to be his hands and feet. And that really excites me. Um, something that I really love about nursing is that it won't always be perfect. I learned that even if you've been doing this job for so many years and you have so much experience with it, there is always something that you don't know which seems terrifying when you have lives in your hands, but it's also really cool. Um, some of the examples I had for my shadow day was Mrs. Barber. She's only been working in the mom-baby unit for like seven months, and she was asking a recent college graduate who was at working as a nurse how to do some of the things that she just didn't know how to do, and they were working together and helping each other out. And another thing that I thought was actually really funny was there was a mom who was a patient there who just had a baby, and she worked as a nurse at a different hospital. So Mrs. Barber was asking the patient's help on how to do some of the things that she didn't know how to do. So I just love that with this job, you never stop learning, and there's always more. Another thing that I learned about nursing, um, Angela, the CNA, she told me, you have to be prepared to do some heavy lifting, whether that's helping patients move from one place to another, or it's moving heavy equipment around got to be willing to do some grunt work as a nurse. Um, another personal experience that I had with the physical aspect of nursing was constantly walking. <laughs> I shadowed Mrs. Barber for six hours, and I guarantee five of those hours we were either walking at a very fast pace or we were standing in the patient's room assisting them. The other hour was charting or sitting down to grab a quick bite before you had to Go off and do something else again. So you won't be sitting at a desk all day. You'll be constantly figuring out what your patients needs and how you can 
be of service to them. And it's just so hands-on. Another thing that I really love about nursing is that no patient is the same, especially in the mom-baby unit. There were a few examples of that. Um, they call a mom and the newborn baby a couplet. So one of the couplets, that baby had low blood sugar, and we had to go in and give her some glucose and check her every few hours, which, shout out to Miss Bloomquist, I actually knew what I was doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so none of the other babies that she was, were her patients had that issue. Um, another thing was there was a mom who didn't speak any English at all, and her teenage daughter was actually in the room being her translator. I just love the challenge behind no patient being the same. It makes the job so much more personal and exciting because like Angela said, you get to know your patients within the hospital, but also who they are as a person and who they are beyond the hospital. To do all the things that I just described, I will absolutely need to utilize humility and compassion. And not only did God give me this capstone experience to pursue those, he also opened up a huge, so many huge areas of my life to do so. Um, as most of you know, last week we put on the show Cinderella, and I had the absolute privilege of playing Cinderella, and that is honestly where I learned this extremely valuable lesson and where I learned these virtues. So I also had the privilege of working with so many elementary and junior high students, which so many of them are in this room right now, which is amazing, and that's truly where I did my best to carry the character traits of Cinderella, which her whole character, she it revolves around kindness and compassion, and she doesn't care about physical appearance or wealth. All she cares about is loving and serving others. Now, the start of this is just a role, but I realized as the months progressed on who I was portraying, and it was Christ. Now, I'm not saying at all that she's the perfect character, that I portrayed her perfectly in any way, but her Christ-like aspects were so impactful to me as a person. Just her willingness to serve and to put herself below others and her quickness to forgive really changed me. And like I said before, working with so many younger classmen and elementary and junior high students was just the perfect opportunity to display these character traits and to carry them with me off the stage and wherever I went. Like I said, I did not do this perfectly. I wish I could have. But this musical experience is truly where I learned compassion and humility. But it's because of this capstone experience that I paid such close attention to those virtues and I was able to grow in them. Another moment from the musical that was really eye-opening for me was the week before show night, I got a terrible head cold. It was, it was terrible. And I did absolutely everything that I could to heal myself. I was taking all the medicine that I could take. I drank so much water, vitamin C, humidifiers. The Sutherlands gave me so many essential oils. It was, my room smelled really weird after that week. But, <laughs> so I tried everything that I could to heal myself. And in that, those moments of panic, I learned all three of the lessons that I just talked about. The first one being that I do not take failure well and that I was not about to go on stage and sing and dance and perform in front of people if I was anything less than 100% and I didn't give up any of that control <laughs> at all. Uh, the second thing that I learned is a lesson that Mrs. Payne actually taught me when she was praying over me before a show. She reminded me that all we can do is the best with what God gave us here on earth and trust that he is the ultimate healer. And for those of you who are in the room who want to be nurses or who are excited about that, that's what we get to do. And that's so awesome. We, are, we get the chance to be his hands and feet, the ultimate healer's hands and feet, and do the best with what the Lord gave us here on earth. And I'm so excited about that. The third thing I realized that none of this is about me. I was being so selfish, and my motive behind getting healthy was centered around me and only me because I wanted to sound good, and I wanted to perform well and for people to like me. But that is not, not what it should have been at all. 
as soon as I relinquished that control of my health and I just realized that this whole show is about showing the love of Christ to others, to anyone sitting in the audience, anyone on stage, I was changed for the better because of it. These are all lessons I will never forget. And I have nothing else but this capstone experience and the goodness of God to thank for these opportunities to grow in these virtues. After looking back over this entire year, I see a lot of failure, a lot of disappointment, a lot of struggle, but I also see so many amazing experiences, so many doors opened, so much goodness that came from God. And I will tell you, juniors and sophomores and freshmen and junior hires, that this is not an easy task to accomplish, seniors, you know. And everything could go wrong or everything could go right, but don't take it for granted. Whether you do absolutely everything that you planned and all your interviews work out and all of your experiences that you line up work out, or nothing at all happens, <laughs> like my first, my first whole portion of the year was nothing. <laughs> nothing started happening for my capstone experience until two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, my interviews started happening. I got my shadow day with Mrs. Barber. I got the letters from the sixth graders, which is why I didn't have time to deliver them yet. So whether you do everything you planned or absolutely nothing, you will be changed for the better because of this capstone experience. This semester, I'm just reminded of all the plans that fell through, the ideas that fell through, and all the hopes that fell to the ground. But after reflecting over what I learned, I realized that God was working in all areas of my life, not just this little capstone experience. And what I hope you get from that is that you should never limit God. That's what I did. I was so frustrated and angry when I was looking at this little capstone experience in my senior year saying, why aren't you doing anything within that? And it wasn't until I took a huge step back to realize that he was doing so much more in every area of my life, in every relationship, every conversation, every aspect of the musical. So as I move into the next chapter of my life, I'm so grateful for this experience and all I've learned about myself, who God is and who God wants me to be. And I cannot wait to see what he does next because it has become so obvious to me that the Lord works in amazing ways. Thank you. Yes, Sierra? Well microphone. <laughs> she asked what kind of nurse I want to be. Um, I really loved what Mrs. Barber does with um, moms who just had the baby and the newborn baby. I just think that that's, it's not quite as like life-threatening, but it's just really sweet and really challenging. But I would say I'm looking, looking into that. So, Mariah? Um, how do you plan on bringing your faith into your everyday nursing um, I actually asked, oh, how do I plan on bringing my faith into my everyday nursing experience? Um, I actually asked Angela, the certified nurse assistant, how she deals with faith and being a nurse. She just said that she, has to, she had to convince herself to be really open about it and to be willing to tell people that she's a Christian. And she said that she's gotten a lot of really good responses, whether from patients or her coworkers. But yeah, I think that just that initial step of getting myself to be willing to be open about my faith is, that'll go a long way. Emma? What are you most looking forward to in college or in the work field? What am I most looking forward to in college or in the work field? Um, I don't know. I'm just, I got to say, I'm really excited to not take as many like lit classes and history classes anymore, <laughs> just to focus on science. Yeah. And <laughs> I have one teacher in here that's proud of me. but. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of diving a lot deeper into this field because, you know, in high school it's all about every single area of study, but I'm excited just to focus in on one. Yeah. Mr. Mott. Yeah. The one, one of the virtues you want to focus on is humility. Could you anticipate through your four years of school and when you get into your career, 
how you're actually going to have to demonstrate humility? Hmm. Do I have to repeat that entire thing? <laughs> um, how am I going to need to use humility in the next four years? That was bad. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I just think I, what really stood out to me about what An Angela, the CNA, said was you have to learn to be thankful for a thankless job. And I just think that that's, that's honestly where it's going to come in because you just have to do a lot of things that go unnoticed and you're working for other people that don't always say thank you or and I just I don't want to expect them to say thank you you know so I think that it's going to come up a lot <laughs> <laughs>